very powerful preacher, and he has written books. And what I did, I closed my meeting. He says, well, let's just follow everybody. <laughs> now, that was a very wise decision. Because when I got to where Dr. Miles Monroe, that's where Pastor Colimo was, and he was on staff, and I was assigned. I mean, they sat me next to Miles Monroe <laughs> in the conference, and I was assigned Dr. Oro to drive me to the hotel, and, and of course, he was coming to Oklahoma the following year. And the following year, I was also going to Oral Robert University. And I thank God we met in Oklahoma in 1992. How many years now? It's a long, long time. It's about 20, over 22 years of our friendship. And uh, they were there to help me have a big family, a wife, and eight children. So each time, uh, uh, Evelyn and Dr. Oro had something to eat to give us the, the drove. Each time they saw that vehicle, my children were very happy because they knew food is coming. <laughs> each time they saw that car, Uncle always bring us food. So he helped us with food and everything. And of course, uh, we have been a family and uh, have been coming here. But I, I'm so thankful that the Lord is building this church. Amen. Jesus said what? Uh, you build his church and uh, the gates here will not what? Will not what? Prevail. Amen. Amen. And I, I want to say thank you for being there for us. You supported the work in Zambia, the, the orphanage, and the, everything that we have been doing in, in Africa. Yeah, so I want to say thank you very much. And uh, sister was in Zambia. Thank you. She came and blessed us. Well, is Sister Rene, yes. She, she, she came. And the other sister, uh, yes, so the, but I have an open invitation for all of you to come to Zambia. I'm going in August to go and prepare. So next August, you have to come. <laughs> you have to send a team. <laughs> Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. What a joy to be home. Amen. You know, I, I just want to pray for your building. That God is just going to go before you. Amen. God will do what? Go before you. One of the things, the anointing that God has given me is to pray for buildings. Amen. <laughs> I, I remember at the age of 35, I uh, 32, I left Bible college. And the Lord took me to this place. And we bought the largest church building for, for the sons of God at that time. Now they have built bigger buildings. And do you know the scripture the Lord gave me? I want to give that scripture to you. Romans 8, 8, 32. Amen. When we leave uh, this morning, we are going to go at the property, and we are going to stake the ground. Amen. And Romans, what? Uh-huh. Can somebody stand up and read? We want to stand on that for the next move. God is a God of supernatural. He's going to provide bountifully for you. Amen. And for all of us, we thank God for this place. This place has saved its purpose, but your pastor and his wife have a big, big vision. So we just want to find this place. Amen. Thank you, thank you, thank you. You can come and stand with me here. <laughs> yeah, let's stand together. I, I want you to, and if we can stand up on together, because I believe this relates to what God is about to do for this house. Amen. Romans 8.32 says, 8.32, yes. He who did not spare his own son, uh -huh. who did not do what? Spare his own son, uh -huh. but delivered him up for us all, Yes. how shall he not with him also freely give us all things? Yes. God never did what? He never spared. Spare yes. His own son. Yes. Now compare Jesus to that property. <laughs> I want you to compare Jesus to that property. Do you think God is not going to give us that place? Is he not going to give us millions? You know, God gave me this scripture in 1984. And I was only 32 years old. I didn't even have a house. I was planting a church. And God gave this scripture. And I want to give this scripture to this house. 
Amen. Amen. And I pray that God will open your eyes, not just for the church, but for everything you are going to ask God. He never spared my sister. He never spared his son. And then he says, how much? How much more? How much more? Is he what? Is he going to freely, freely give us millions, millions of dollars to put a structure there that will be a legacy, something that will be passed on to the next generation. We were driving by and we said, Daddy built that church, you know, when we we're going to. So, yeah, she was very proud because our daddy built a house for God. How much more, how much more is he going? I tell you, this is my life scripture. God gave me that scripture when I was 32 and I'm 63 today. How much more, how much more, how much more is he going to give us all these things? All these things, how much more? Hallelujah. How much more, how much more? I, I want you to lead in prayer. Let let's pray. Let I just want us to pray. Amen. Just lead us in prayer that God will provide. Just lead us in prayer. Hallelujah. Amen. Lead us in prayer. Hallelujah. Let, let's Father just God, pray for God's thank you provision. Honor. We give you glory, Father How God. How much more? We thank you, Father God, Lord, for more? the provision, Father God. How Lord, you send your word, you will give us more. freely all freely? things, Father God. Freely. So we thank freely. you, Lord, this month for the freely. all things freely. Freely. In the name of freely. Jesus. Sir. We thank you, Lord, right now, Lord, for the flan, God. Amen. We thank you for the provision, God. Amen. We freely. thank you, God, freely, God. Freely. You have given us all things. Freely. God. So we thank you, Lord, right now, in Amen. the name of freely. Jesus. For freely. Hallelujah. Giving us all freely. things. Freely. Freely. In Jesus Christ's name. Hallelujah. Give a thanksgiving. Uh, thank Amen. you. Thank you, my sister. Amen. Freely. He's going to give us all these things. And has given us families. Amen. Amen. Freely, freely, freely. We thank God. Is going to give us. I, I tell you, that was 1984. And God, you can't sit down, God's people. And, and God blessed us. You see, when you came to Zambia, you never came to the northern part. I passed that on the Congo border. The largest one story building God gave us. And He gave a scripture. And we stood. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> we stood on that scripture. And I tell you, when we paid off and today that building is still standing yeah. hallelujah yeah. praise the lord so god is freely going to give us all the money we need to put a, a structure for him you know i was very much encouraged when we went to pastor eloy because last time we were there they were just you know just here and there but i tell you where you walk in there and I say this is the kingdom of god yeah. amen? amen this is the kingdom of god and you are going to be you know why because you have been planting seeds you have given to africa when god spoke to my wife to start the orphanage you are the first people who gave the money and uh, do you know we have raised two sets of children from 80 uh, from 20204 to to what, what is this year uh -huh. it's how many years now it, it's almost 11 years so those children who came, they were only 10 years, and they are in college. Two are pastors, and uh, one is, uh, two are going to the medical school, and many. It's because you gave. And then we have a new set of orphans who have just come. But you have always, and I, I, I sat in the office as God. You have to remember Dr. Oro and Eva and his global life, because you have planted seeds. Amen? You have planted seeds, and God will also give a hundredfold back to you. So how much more? Praise the Lord. So to, uh, this morning, I, I want to talk about the, 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 the glorious blessing of a covenant relationship. Amen? A glorious what? Blessing of what? Relationship. How many know we are in a covenant relationship? First and foremost, with our Heavenly Father. For God so loved the world. He did what? He gave. And when he gave Jesus, Jesus went to the cross. And what did he on the cross? He shed his blood. Wow. Amen. He did what? He shed his blood. And I thank God that blood seals the covenant. Amen. That blood does what? Seals the covenant. His son paid the most important price, the blood of Jesus, 
was shed on the cross so that you and me, we can come in a covenant relationship with God, the God of heaven, the creator of the universe. And we, a covenant people, that's why I'm here this morning. Amen? Because of a covenant relationship. Now, something happened last year that was very special. Almost this time, I came to the Caribbean Minister's Covenant. And uh, last year, we were in Totola. Now, the, the, the past two years of my life, I think, were the most difficult. You know, God allows us to go through things in life <laughs> so that he can shape us, so he can mold us. So, and uh, God opens the door to come to the conference. And I get to Total, I think, two days before the conference, and I was there. And I think the last night, uh, our president, uh, Brother Hazel Gladstone, he made an announcement. He says, we have been together for many years. And many of you, you need to pledge your commitment to this covenant relationship. And the Spirit of the Lord started speaking to me. He says, you need to pledge commitment to this. As the Lord was speaking to me, uh, President Gladstone Hazel, he calls me out of the cloud and says, Brother Sonder, you are one of us. So when I stood up there, the Lord spoke to me and says, this is a covenant relationship that I've given you that has helped you over the years. And this is a relationship that is going to take you to a new level. Yeah. Amen? The relationship that will do what? To what to a new level. There is no way you can get to another level if you are not in the relationship. Yeah. Amen? Amen. And I, I, I mean, the Spirit of the Lord just brooded over. And of course, after that uh, conference, I came and ministered here. I went to St. Croix and I went back. But when I went back to Idaho, the Lord spoke to me. He says, I needed to write a book on the importance of the covenant relationship. And then the Lord took me to the book of Esther. Amen? Because this is a very interesting story that the Spirit of the Lord was showing me. And uh, this morning when I was praying and God led me back to the story of Esther. Amen? To tell the story of Esther. Hallelujah. Because this, I mean, not, not, not Esther, Ruth. It is Ruth, not Esther. We all know the story of Ruth. Amen? Uh, we can go to the scripture and read this story because God wants to speak to you and wants to speak all of us so that we can have a new beginning. Amen? And everything God is about to do is God is going to connect us. And at the end of the service, we are going to make some covenant declaration. Amen? Covenant what? Declaration, because in a covenant we make declaration. This is a story of Ruth. And God spoke, says, I, I, I needed to study this and, of course, write a book and share th this experience because this is exactly what happened in my life. In the days of Judges, amen, are you there? Yeah, chapter. There, yeah, chapter one, yeah, we will we'll, we'll go through. Uh, the, the judges, there was a famine in the land, and a man of Bethlehem, Judah, went to a sojourning country of Moab, and his wife and his two sons. The name of the man was Elimelech, and the names of the wife was Naomi, and the names of the two sons were Maloth and Chilon. They were Ephraimites from Bethlehem of, in Judah. They went into the country of Moab and remained there. But Abelamech, the husband of Naomi, died. She was left with two sons, and she took the Moabite wives. The name of one was Opa, and the other was Ruth. They lived there about how many years? Ten years. And both Melon and Chilon died so that the woman was without her two sons and what? And a husband. Now, you put your picture, you, you put yourself. You leave a place with a husband. Maybe say you go to Trinidad <laughs> because the economy is good. There's the oil boom there. <laughs> and uh, you get there, 
The first is the husband dies. Now you remain with how many? With how many? Two sons. Then after that ten years, the sons, they also die. So you are left with absolute what? Nothing. But thank God, there is always a place called home. Amen? There is a place called what? <laughs> there is always a place called home. Because home is home. That is where you have your people. People know you. And then she had no choice. She had to go back home. And then when she stood up, she told the girl, says, you know, I'm going home. There's nothing. And she was, she was very broken, you know. You know, things happen in life that will break your heart. But you know what? God allows things to happen so that you can move. <laughs> you can move to a place where you'll be connected. And then there was this one girl, she walked away. She went back to her people. And she begged and says, look, even if I had a, a husband today and uh, I, I, I have a baby, there's no way you can win. But this girl, by the name of who? Ruth, she persisted. And remember the statement she made. She says, your, your God and your people will be my people. Who was the God of Ruth? I mean, of, of Naomi. Who was the God of Naomi? God of Israel. Elohim, the possessor of heaven, the great God. This Young lady, she just loved her mother-in-law. She was very, very, very kind. You know, it's just a joy to be kind. Amen? To be what? She was very kind. And she, she looks at this woman, and I'm sure she had sensed something special about this. And, you know, out of that kindness, the love just came out. And when we have the love of God, we make the right decision. Amen? We move when God tells us to do what? We stay when God tells us to do what? To stay. So this young lady, she just said, no, I am going with you. Hallelujah. I'm going what? With you. That is a level of commitment that God is bringing in the body of Christ. Hallelujah. We come to that place of friendship. Where we are very kind. Oro and everyone have been very kind to me. I'm from Africa. They, they have been to Africa. And they, they see the suffering there. And each time I come back here, they do everything to make sure. That is the love of God. And God is putting the same love in each one of us. Hallelujah. So she says, I'm not, we, we're going together. And uh, I, I just want to look at my own tears. Kindness. She loved her mother-in-law. Now, here is... A woman who had lost everything. And uh, she has to return to Bethlehem, her place. But thank God, when we move in that love, God sets up divine appointments. Amen. He does what? He allows us to meet the people we want to meet. Amen. We, we meet the people, we do what? That God wants us to meet. You know, do you know everyone at this conference? I met a guy who just, just, just blessed me. You know, one thing, I went to Zambia for a jubilee, and God spoke to me and says, you need to go back and help with farming. To go and grow food for people. I said, but God, we have the offer. He says, yes, you need to go grow food. Now, two nights ago, <laughs> when we were just leaving the conference, this guy comes to me and says, where are you from? I say, I'm from Zambia. He says, we have where... Our, our ministry helps people to grow up food. We give seeds. That's Gonzalez. We will give you seeds, and then when you harvest, we shall come and buy with American dollars. I needed to be in St. Thomas to meet this man from, <laughs> from, from Miami who came just for two nights. He was just here for two nights to meet me, and he says, and I called everybody and said, start plowing, plowing. The seed money is coming. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Amen. <The word. laughs> and, and he says, uh, plow as much as you can. And he says, when the seed money comes, we are going to put the, the seed in the ground. Amen. We are not going to eat the seed. 
<laughs> and after that, when we harvest, they will come and buy with American dollars. Woo, I pray that God will start setting up divine appointment. Hallelujah. Hallelujah for this ministry for each one of you here. You meet the right people at the right time. So I called my, my, grand, my uncle. says, uncle, how much, how much land do you have? He says, we have plenty of land. He says, how much are you going? He says, we have somebody in America who is going to give us seed. He will buy us seed. And when we do well, you come and buy. Can you beat God? Can you beat God? <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. So I see divine appointments in your life, my brother. Amen. God setting you up. I see divine appointment for each one of us here. God setting us up. Amen. Setting us up with people who just blow our mind. I said, what? that just blow my mind. Let's blow my mind because even before I go to Zambia, <laughs> somebody is going to buy and is coming to, with American dollars to come and buy. Hallelujah! It is just one man writing a check for that place. Amen. <laughs> I couldn't sleep at a sleepless night. <laughs> Have you, uh, something like that happens, you can't sleep. Amen. <laughs> Says God. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> so I decree divine appointment. This uh, girl, she loves this woman so much. And uh, she, this woman has nothing to offer. And she's very loyal. She gets to a place. And then there's this man called Boaz. He's an honorable man. He has a, a farm. He was a farm also. And then he is in the line as a kinsman. He's not the first. The sub, somebody who is supposed to redeem, to marry, because that was the system. You know, when a family member dies, they, there's a person who is supposed to succeed. Succession, you know. But the, the, the guy who was next, he was not willing. But Boaz is the next. And you know one thing? She came with a good report. They heard about that she had just come. And then uh, she, the mother-in-law, says, you can go, he's our kinsman. In fact, he's on the list. And she gets there, and uh, she, the mother-in-law gives instruction how to position herself. Hallelujah, how to do what? Amen. Amen. We are in the place where God wants us to do what? To position ourselves. And I pray that your steps will be ordered by the Lord. Your steps will be in the right place at the right time. Position. And then this kinsman, he, he has a covering, you know, and he says, just go and lie. And she is at a place called the freshing floor. Amen? A place called what? Well, tell me, what's the meaning of that place? Yeah? Thank you. That's the word I was looking for. That's a place where they do what? They separate what? The wheat and the chaff. And guess what? Global life is a what? A freshing flow. Amen. We are a what? We are a what? Yes. Somebody come and stand here and read uh, Joel. I want to show you something about how special the freshing flow is. And that's where we are. That's where this ministry is. Uh -huh. uh, Joel 2, 23 and 24. Glory to God. Uh, Joel 2, 23, 24. Yeah. Find it, you can come and read. Uh, uh, that's our readers. You'll come and read it. <laughs> they, they said you are the reader. <laughs> you, you find it? You found it? Okay, you come and read. Okay, you read the next one. You come and stand here. Okay, now I want you to listen to this because this is a, a revelation for this house. Amen? Yes. 23. Mm. 24. Yes. Be glad. Be glad. Okay. Is that, uh, be glad. 
Rejoice in the Lord your God, for he has given you the autumn rains in the righteousness. Yes, he has done what? I want you to catch this. This is a very powerful revelation. God is giving us what? Autumn rain uh -huh. in righteousness. Okay. He sends you abundant showers, okay. both autumn and spring. Uh -huh. Rain, spring rains uh -huh. as before. Yes. 24. Yes. The threshing floors. Aha, uh -huh, the what? The threshing floors. Shall be what? Will be filled with filled grain. Filled with grain, grain. sticks of prosperity. Mm -hmm. uh, continue. The vats will overflow uh -huh. with new wine and no. oil. Praise the Lord. I continue reading. I will repay. I will repay you for the years the locusts have That's right. eaten. Amen. The great locusts and the young locusts. Uh -huh. The other locusts. And the locust swarm. That's right. My great army, and I sent among you. Amen. Now, let, 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 let me just you use it. Okay. Uh, I want you to see something. God, in other versions, says God gives us two types of rain. Amen. Two types of what? There is the, 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 the former and the what? And the latter rain. Now, I grew up in Africa, and uh, we are uh, agricultural society, and rain is very important. And remember, the rain st starts dropping in the month of November. Amen. That's when the what? And uh, we have just trickle, and we call the first rain Utusan Sabalimi. That means uh, that is just showering the, 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 the farmers. And as a little boy, we will see in the rain. And you know, the soil is, it smells so good. Let's just rejoice in this rain that has just begun. As a little boy, we would dance and just rejoice because we know that is the, just the beginning of something special. And then we have the former rain, the, the, latter, the, the former rain, the former rain. That rain comes, and that's when they start going out to to till the ground, to break the ground, to break the ground, and in between, you do the planting. That is in November, December. Everything is in the ground. Uh, uh, by, 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 by February, the, the corn or uh, uh, groundnuts, whatever rice, starts growing. Thank God, the best time to come to Zambia is the month of April. Because we have the harvest. You eat the fresh. Uh -huh. Produce from the ground. So we just rejoice to see the rain. Now, this is very, under, this is very meaningful because the, the, there is the rain that comes just to make us excited. And there's the rain that comes to break the ground. Amen. Breaking the ground. And then there's the rain that comes to help us to bring in, to ripen the harvest. Now, God is speaking to this house. This is a season where... We, we are going to have both the latter and the former rain. And the next thing we see, the freshing floor. Hallelujah. So what you are going to build from here is going to be what? It's going to be what? A freshing floor. Amen. You are building God a what? Yes. And what uh, Pastor Eloy has built is what? Hallelujah. And I, I want you to know revival is about to break out. Hallelujah. And what are we going to have in that freshing floor? F grain, 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 grain. And grain speaks of the, the harvest. We're going to have souls. Many people are going to be swept into the kingdom of God. Amen. Tonight at the conference, I'll be speaking on the manifest sons of God. I believe God gave me that word. I love you to come because I know that God is going to raise many from, from this house to mature, to manifest God. Amen. Amen. To do what? Face God. Man, so that people, they will line up outside that freshing floor. Well, then, then, then there's grain. There's grain. After grain, there is what? There, there, is, there is all and there is wine. There is a joy. Of, of the Lord. Isn't that something? Praise the Lord. God is giving us a seed. He's giving us a place. So that's what God is going to do. So this, this, she comes to the place where Boaz was doing that. She was there at the what? And she was there just 
on time. Because she is going to be part of the blessing. She is going to be part of the harvest. You have come to Global Life Church on time. Hallelujah. You are going to be part of the overflow. Woo, hallelujah. Part of what? The overflow, Sister Hazel, is coming. Amen. And God has prepared you for the overflow. You are ready to handle the overflow. The overflow, the overflow, the overflow is coming. You don't even have to worry about the number of people. No. When the overflow comes, the overflow will just flood the whole place. Praise the Lord. So, praise God. So, Boaz, she was connected. Like on, on, on Wednesday night, I was connected to the guy with the seed. I wrote in my diary his phone number and said, the seed man. <laughs> seed man, amen. I can show you in my diary. I call him a seed man. I've got his phone number. We call him the seed man, amen. Guess what? God is going to send seed men here, amen. <laughs> I made my seed man. <laughs> And he said, we can seed women, of course, yeah. <laughs> Amen. So, wrote in my diary, I met a seed man in St. Thomas. He's going to send us seeds. <laughs> and we'll be very smart with those seeds. We'll not eat a seed, because you can eat a seed. <laughs> Hallelujah. So, she had a divine appointment. Now, that is what brings redemption. Brings what? brings what? Hallelujah. So you are moving to build God a redemption center. Amen. A what? A what? A what? Hallelujah. Hallelujah for that redemption center. Amen. She, she was redeemed because of love and then she was very she was very, very special. She was very what? Ruth was very what? And she was accepted. She was not just tolerated, <laughs> but she was accepted and she was celebrated. How do I know? Uh, yeah, come and read uh, Ruth. If, Ruth. Ruth 4, verse 15. And I want you to underline that in your, in your Bible. Everyone, you have to underline that. If there's something you take out of my preaching, that is you. That's what God is going to do. Yes, verse 15. Hallelujah. 4.15. Yeah, the wind is blowing. So all the four winds is blowing. Four winds, the south wind, the yeah, for 15, the north wind. Uh -huh. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> she forgets that. What is this? Yes, 15, I see. Hallelujah. Amen. 15 says, Yes. And, they may, and may he be to you uh -huh. a restorer of life. Amen. And a nourisher of your old age. Yes. For your daughter in law, uh -huh. who loves you. Who loves you. Who is better to you. Who is better to you. Than <laughs> seven sons. Seven sons. Has born him. Yes. Better to you than what? Seven sons. Better to you than what? Seven sons. Wow. Isn't that something? Mm -hmm. It's going to be what? The restorer? A restorer of uh -huh. life. And I pray that this place, wherever you go as a child of God, you be celebrated as somebody who restore and bring nourishment. nourishment. And more than how many? Seven sons. Many seven sons. She lost. She lost two. But she has one who is just more than. Amen. Amen. More than what? That is the compliment about your life. May you be celebrated and accepted in every place. Because you be, thank you, my sister. You be so productive. Amen. More than seven. That is how much God is going to, to bless. Now, I want to make some declaration because in every covenant you, you do what? You make what? There, there are seven declarations this morning. Uh, of course, the other blessing for, now, for, for Ruth, she's in the genealogy of Jesus. Yeah, that one is 
very. She became the grandmother of who? Uh, uh, Obed, Obed, and after Obed, <laughs> Jesse, uh, and then after Jesse, David. Hallelujah. And you read that she, because, just because of the love, she found herself, divine appointment, and the redemption she brought, she is in the genealogy of our Lord Jesus Christ. So this morning, I want to make declaration with you. Amen? To do what? Amen. And because of God's love, we can make this declaration. I cannot fail. Amen? Can you say that? I cannot fail because of the love of God. Because of what? Because of what? And I want to tell you a very interesting story about I cannot fail. Uh, I have a friend, a church in Illinois. They helped us to purchase some semi-trucks. We, we are in the trucking company. We've been transporting. God spoke to me and says, you need to start this business. So it's a long story. Brother Wallace and this church in Effingham, they bought us two semi-trucks. We had asked for one. We said, can you just help us with one? And then Brother Wallace says, oh, we can only give you $10,000. So he calls and says, Brother Sonda, I have $10,000. Can I send that to you? And I said, no, you send it to the guy we're selling. He's in Tennessee. And then the church secretary, all she had to do was just to write the address I'd given them and send that 10000 to purchase a $14,000 truck. That is a fourteen. So we're going to have 4000 to pay and we're going to ship and all kinds of things. Now, this church secretary, Debbie, she says, Pastor, before I mail this check, my husband has just parked a truck. I just parked the truck. Let's compare the truck that is in Tennessee and the truck that is in the parking lot of our house. Wow. So Brother Wallace goes there, found this, the one that I was going to buy in Tennessee, it was a, a day cab. And it was uh, 1994. It had more than one million miles and one door was beat up. I was not closing. This one that Debbie's husband had parked was a 98 Freightliner with a, 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 a cab where it, it was a person truck. He had a fridge. It was just like his home. It was like a caravan. Uh, and then it, it, Brother Wallace went there and says, this is God. Truly you heard from God. They were selling that truck for $7,000 which was much newer and in a much better condition. So, he calls me and says, Bram Sonda, we found something better for you. We have found a much newer truck in the parking lot of our church secretary, and they are selling for $7,000. So when they were about to write $7,000, they says, no, give us $5,000. So we got it for $5,000. And then they went and cashed that $5,000. They changed everything. When the church board heard what had happened, they says, no, this is from God. We're going to buy him a second truck. <laughs> they went and bought another one for $19,000. I tell you, the day when I, I appeared in the church parking lot, Brother Wallace started those trucks. I, I was so discouraged. I said, God, this, uh -uh. I almost ran away. I almost said, sell them because I know those trucks are people, they will, they will destroy them. I mean, have you ever received a blessing where you just know this is too much? <laughs> and it's like, God, what is this I get myself into? <laughs> Instead of rejoicing, my heart is saying, no, 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 no. <laughs> it's like, well, just take them, <laughs> sell them. I don't know. <laughs> Man, I was like, what? <laughs> it was too much. <laughs> but thank God. <laughs> <laughs> I drove on that highway, 57, and said, God, this is, <laughs> I don't know how. <laughs> but thank God, <laughs> we managed. 
God sent a young man. We went to Af we went and got them on the coastline. We drove them across, registered them, left them there. I was in Africa for six months, and then uh, I, I I come back, I I come back. We prayed to New York in New York. Somebody gave us two thousand dollars to buy the trailers, and I'm in New York and my daughter's house. The Lord says, "Give away that money," and I said, "God, that's money for the trailers." We gave that money. That, that's the story. So. Uh, 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 the following day, I'm in another town. I preached Sunday morning, pastors. He is somebody selling some trucks. And uh, he's got a trailer. So we went and we got just for almost a thousand dollars a trailer with through Axel. So God helped us to get that. Now, about not failing, this is we decree and declare you are not going to fail. Amen. We are not going to do what? We are not going to fail. Now, I go back to brother, I'm, I'm driving through brother Wallace. He has a nice church and he, he's been to Zambia also. He's just, and he's very much encouraged because we have done something. So he says, brother Msonda, what is it that we can do in Zambia you don't fail? And I said, what did I? Yes. What is it we can do that you don't fail? And I said, brother Wallace, if you can give us two more trailers and another truck, five and five, we would not fail. And says, yes, we are going to buy. I, I left a picture of that one. They, they bought the second one. They gave us money for it. Almost brand new. So when I came out of that church, I was just rejoicing. And, you know, I remember, you know, I, I mean, that, that's another example. When uh, President Obama won the presidency, the first thing that he did was to bail out Chrysler. No, no, not Chrysler. GM, all those big motors. You know what he said? He said these companies are too big to fail. Remember that? They're what? They are what? And stand up, I want to decree you are too blessed to fail. Amen. To what? To what? Too blessed. You are not going to fail. Amen. To what? Man, I was jumping and rejoicing because this is the last person who can ask somebody, but I decree and declare you are not going to fail. This ministry is too blessed. Every child of God, listen to me. We make a decree and a declaration that if there is a ministry that is going to be blessed, it is like global life, Lord God. And other ministry, Father, we pray that these are your children. They are too blessed. Too blessed. Our children, they are too blessed. Our grandchildren, they are too blessed. Too blessed. Too blessed to fail. Hallelujah. Amen. <laughs> Blessings, blessings. Kelly, sit down. You know, amen. Yeah, too blessed. Too blessed. What? No, we cannot. We're too blessed. Amen. Yeah, you know, President Obama bailed out those. President Obama bailed out those company. He says they're too big. <laughs> yeah, they're what? <laughs> too big. And guess what? They use the same thing for the second campaign. They, they carried poster says Chrysler is alive. Bin Laden is dead. <laughs> Did he, did he catch that? Bin Laden is what? And Christ and GM is alive. <laughs> Praise the Lord. So that is the first what? Declaration. You are not going to fail. I'm not going to fail. Amen. You know, I love that song. I, I'm, I'm so much blessed, I cannot beg for bread. Yeah, let's sing that song. Let's sing that song one more time. How much time do we have? I love that song. You know, Can we sing that song? Sister Ho, come and lead us. Come and lead us. Yeah, come and lead us, my sister. I want to see that. She really blessed us in the conference. Amen. Too blessed to what? No. We can't. Too blessed. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Yeah, let's stand up and worship. See, so that's what we sing now. In Africa, you sing songs, you know. You, you, you preach and you sing songs. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. You, yeah. So you, you've been there. I, I will not suffer. Me, I will, will not suffer. suffer. I, I will, will not beg for food. Me, I will, will not suffer. I will not beg for bread. Me, I will not suffer. Me, I will not suffer. I will not beg. I will not beg for bread. Me, I will not suffer. Me, I will not suffer. I will not beg. I will not beg. Tell me why he is. He is my daddy, oh. 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 He's my papa. He 
is my papa. Oh, he is my papa. Oh, he is my papa. Oh, he is my papa. Oh, my papa. Oh, he is my papa. Oh, my papa. Oh, tell me, me, I will not. I will not suffer. I will not beg. I will not beg for bread. I will not suffer. Me, I will not suffer. I will not beg. I will not beg for bread. He is my daddy. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Father, we thank you. Amen. God is our Father. We need to be reminded. Hallelujah. The second declaration is, you will never leave us, know what? Amen. You will never, 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 never leave us, nor forsake us. He's going to dispatch angels to help us. You know, the enemy came against us uh, in 2013. That's another story. But the Lord told me to go and lock myself in my house <laughs> for seven months. And uh, in that seven months, the Lord sends this Cheyenne Indian to my house. For seven months, this Indian, well, I mean, if he comes here, you cannot tell. He was God sent. He made sure I had money. He made sure there was food in the house. Seven months from September 2013 to April, this man took care of me. When I was in Zambia, the same man put a, a large sum of money in my account to make sure that I do the work. Only God, only God, only God. Those were the most tough moments. We closed everything, but we just stayed and prayed. I'm sitting in a meeting in Vancouver, Washington. I mean, I, I, I was crying to God for the electricity bill. It was about a thousand plus. I said, they're going to disconnect. A man says, 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 the Lord speaks to me to give you money. How much money do you want? <laughs> How much money? Guess what? The day is coming for you when people will come and say, How much money? How much money? How much money? Thank God I didn't carry the bill. I did had carried a bill with me, 1,300, and just said, this is how much money I need. <laughs> Maybe if I something was going to say, the Lord spoke me to give you money. How much? How much? That's the God we see when I locked myself in my house. Somebody patted me on the back. He says, God has spoken to me. How much? I decree and declare that people will come to you and ask, how much? How much money? Vancouver, Washington, 27. I remember the 27th April. And I told him how much money I needed. Amen? How much, how much, how much, how much? Amen? That's a divine appointment. Hallelujah. I want to pray for you. Come, come. I want to pray that God will provide quickly. Come, 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 come. Yes, I, I, I know you have a financial need. God provide for my dear sister whatever she needs in the next five days. I decree and declare that the man will come. Five days. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'll pray for everybody that the money is coming. Amen. The money is coming. People, he will remind people, oh, you money, people are supposed to bless you. God will remind them. He will speak to them. He will speak audibly. Amen. <laughs> Amen. God will do what? He will speak what? Audibly. Father, I pray that God, these next five days, there will be financial miracles in the lives of these individuals. Your children, Lord God, the next five days we pray that Jesus will come through. Amen. So this Bruce... Indian guy from nowhere, God brought him in our lives. I remember I was in Denver, and he called me and says, the Lord woke me up. I have to send you some money. So he sent money by money, grandma, and in the test, in a Western Union. The test question, who gave it to her? The answer was Jesus. <laughs> Amen? So we decree and declare. This morning, I make a a covenant declaration with this house 
that there will be an overflow. Your cup, your cup is going to do what? Your cup is going to do what? Overflow. Hallelujah. And I decree and declare he will send the rain according to Joel, which we read. 2.23 to 25. Amen. 2.23, you are coming into that freshing flow of the abundance uh, overflow. And I'm glad I'm standing in front of the most generous cup I've known, the Hazels. These have been my friends for almost 23 years. You know, I was telling them how each time we saw you, you, you drive that old <laughs> Oldsmobile. <laughs> That Oldsmobile was a redemption. Eh? <laughs> that was a... <laughs> you did not bring it, no. That one, that one you are supposed to bring it. Because <laughs> oh, 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 each time we saw that, we knew there's plenty of food from <laughs> Uncle Oran and <laughs> Evelyn. Oh, yes, we remember that vehicle, man. <laughs> that was a redemptive. <laughs> oh, praise the Lord. Man, you know, God has brought us a long way. We have come away. You know, still still sitting there, waiting for Evelyn to give birth. And with all, we're just praying that she'll give birth. God just, yeah, at Nia. So Nia is born. We are there. <laughs> then I come <laughs> there at Brother Colimo's church. And I says, Evelyn, does Nia run? She says, no, that she walks. Says, but I'm sorry, she doesn't walk. She took off. <laughs> <laughs> now she has a driver's license. <laughs> There's no greater joy to see children grow, you know, and just, uh, but now, God is giving us a fresh flow. Amen? Amen. Millions are coming. <laughs> Millions are what? Oh, yeah, billions are coming to fund. We're going to meet seed men. <laughs> seed man. <laughs> Wrote my daddy, I met a seed man. <laughs> Says, go and plant, go and till the land. We shall send the seed money. <laughs> How much we need the seed money? <laughs> Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So let me continue to make declaration. Tonight we'll be at a, I'll be speaking at how we're going to man, manifest as a what? Sons of God. We're going to do what? We're going to manifest as sons and daughters of God. Where is that? Overflow, then we will experience an open heaven. Amen. That is our declaration. We covenant and make a declaration that there will be an open heaven. Jesus, when he went to be baptized, the Bible says the heaven did what? Open and says, this is my beloved son in whom I what? Well, please. So he was endorsed by the Father. Towards the end of his ministry, he goes to a mountain with his disciple, a place of transfiguration. The heavens were open. And the Bible says, listen to him. Amen. And the place was filled with the Shekinah glory of God. And God is bringing that Shekinah glory, that people, they will listen. Amen. We are moving to a mountain of transfiguration. So we declare that there will be an open heaven. And we are going to have more than enough. That's number six. We will have more than what? Enough. And uh, finally, no weapon formed against us with what? Will Prosper, we are more than one conquerors. Amen. What does the Bible say about uh, overcomers? We are more than conquerors. Yes. So we are moving into the area of being overcomers. Amen. Who overcomes? You see, God changed my name. You have a new name for the new season. David Moses. Hallelujah. So he overcomes. So we are overcoming so that we can inherit everything that God has for us, we are more than conquerors. Did you get all the seven points? Which one did you miss? Okay, okay, let me go. Uh, one is, I uh, cannot fail. We cannot fail. He will not leave us. Uh, my cup will overflow. He will send the rain. Yes, yeah, cup will overflow. He will send the rain is number four. Yes. Uh -huh. And we are going to experience what? An open heaven. And we will have more than, more than e enough. Amen. 
Praise the Lord. So we covenant and we make a declaration. It would be very interesting should the Lord tarry the next 20 years of our life <laughs> where God would take this cup and where God would take me. You know, that, 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 that business, we've got, we've got six, six trucks. And uh, we just need, going in August, we need some seed money to go, to move from transporting. You know, the past six years we made other people rich. We've been transporting for other guys. <laughs> and those guys that also went to buy uh, their own trucks. So it's like we are out of employment. Now, we need money so that we can, we can become distributors. We have experience. We have kept those trucks running. So what we need is just to have money so that we can buy corn, we can buy and sell and just flood the market. And if, if yeah, if you have uh, 10 trucks and 10 trailers and you're making 10,000 per truck per month, how much is that? It's just about 100,000. So we are believing God we can have about 50 trucks and 50 trailers. In the next five years, we can build God a million dollar company. Is that possible? Yes. Amen. Is that what? From trying to run away from those trucks now to believing God. <laughs> for more trucks now. <laughs> now I can believe God. I was trying to run away. I said, brother, why let's sell those trucks? This is too much. <laughs> Man, I said, what is it I got myself into? So you pray that God help us to build a million dollar company. And God will bless you here to do the same. Now, the concept of having that company is what they call the first fruit. Because the first fruit concept is you give a profit the month you started. Yeah, for instance, if we're making a million, we started in July. 14th July is our anniversary as a trucking company. So we, we invite you to come to Zambia. And we have a million, and we sit down and say, who are we going to bless? Honorable people, who, am I going to, who are we going to honor? We can invest in other Christians. And another guy has got a million. And another one. That's how we are going to take back what the enemy has stolen. Just like what uh, uh, Gladstone was talking about, having a Christian supermarket here, where we, you, you buy. You know, we, the next 10 years, things have to change. Amen? After what? So we are pressing. So I'm going to spend two months there just to make sure we paint those trucks. They have a corporate image. We, we have cash flow. We write our own script. Amen? We do what? Yeah, we, we, we're not playing someone's script. You know in the play where they say, you play this part, you play. No, no, no. We, write, we have our own theater and our own script. Hallelujah. We're getting there. We are getting there. Have faith in God. Because we're too big to what? <laughs> too big to fail. So I just want to thank God. Amen. Much, how much time? Can you give me five minutes? I just want to. Yeah. Uh, uh, tonight I'll be speaking about mature sons of God. But I just want to give a testimony. Why that... In Romans, Romans, Romans 8. The earth is groaning for the, yes, God to manifest his sons, mature sons of God. Now, that is a life verse for me. And God has been speaking. In 19, 1973, I left my parents in 72. And I went to work for the government in Livingston, where you preached, where you saw the Victoria Force. You went to, uh, that's the place I began to start and uh, I had uh, a visitation. Four massive angels that walks in this house. It was not a vision. It was just like seeing them come, accompanied by this prophetess. And I was lying on the couch. And I mean, they brought the glory of the Lord, the presence of God. And they spoke these words. When you mature, God is going to. Use you. Man. That is 73 to this year is how many years? It is 42 years I've prayed that. And guess what God speaks? That is a season we're entering. A season where heaven is going to open. We're going to work with big angels. Even those who have gone home to be with the Lord. You know the cloud of witness? Those, yeah, they are very much part. They are very, very much part of what they are doing. My mother came from Africa to pray for 100 days. We are in the church. My uncle was martyred, was killed as a Christian. She, my mother saw my uncle in the service. And she told me, says, 
Do you know your uncle was in the service? He says, Mama, that, no, 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 dead people, they don't. He says, that's a ghost. I, I refused my mama. I says, no, 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 no. Guess what? Another preacher came after six months says, those people who have gone to be with the Lord, they come to fellowship with us. There's a cloud of witness. There's a place where they, will, they can choose to come and sit. And if God opens your, your eyes to see them, they are there. And thank God, in these last days, they are coming to help us. We are going to have angels, you know, and God is revealing mysteries, unlocking mysteries. It was so powerful, this conference. You know, when your sister-in-law, Judith, she was the first speaker, I listened. Man, she's a different, unlocking mysteries. When Barrett spoke, it was just, you see, those mysteries are taking us to go beyond the veil. And there will be unlimited access, unlimited access to what God is about to do. You know why? Because it has to do with the end-time harvest of souls. So I just want to thank God for bringing me home to come and share these things and just to talk about the importance of covenant relationship and also to make declaration. So I just want to pray one more time. Then Dr. Oro, come and pray. I really want him to pray for the orphanage. Thank God. God has helped us. And pray that we really get not just a seed for groundnuts, but also seed money. Amen? That God will just give us a seed money. This is the season for seed, 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 seed. That we need to have seeds in our hands. Father, I, I'm so thank you for the opportunity to share in this my home church. I bless every child of God, and I decree that, Father, in the next five days, there will be divine appointment and miracles next Sunday. They will come back with testimonies of you intervening, you coming through. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.